This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HTC Touch HD2. About a year ago, HTC released the HD overseas, but never in this country, and it was a flagship phone for them. So it had a huge 800 by 480 display, and it, at that time, one of the biggest pieces of glass. Now, this guy has a 4.3 inch capacitive display running at 800 by 408 pixels. That makes the iPhone seem teeny. We'll give it a comparison. In comparison to the iPhone, right here, as you can see, way bigger screen. Yet it's very thin and remains pocketable. You can put it in your back pocket. Guys, if you have baggy jeans, you could probably put it in your front, but you might want to be careful of that big piece of glass. It's the volume rocker here. Top. This is to pull off the back battery door. Micro USB, going forward, HTC is going to be going with micro USB as a standard, and a 3.5mm headset jack stereo. And we'll give this a comparison to the Motorola Droid. Motorola Droid also has the same high resolution display, but not as big as this one. I'll give you a side view. The Droid's got to be thicker because it has the slide out keyboard. Now, this runs what looks like TouchFlow 3D, but HTC now calls it Sense, as they call it with their Android phones. It's pretty much the TouchFlow 3D you're familiar with if you've used recent HTC phones. You got the big clock here. The weather is now integrated into the clock and when you first come back to the home screen, which you'll see later, you get an animation. The weather actually covers the entire screen. You'll have clouds wafting across or the windshield wiper blade and rain will run back and forth over here. You have huge finger-friendly shortcuts here. You can put any applications that you want and there's another set here. That's as far as it goes. Though. You can't keep extending it down. And HTC has gotten rid of the tab that was devoted just to applications at least by default. You've got the same speed dial here. You've got text messages that you can flip through. Email over here. Sorry, we don't have anything to show at the moment. Web browser tab where you can have two bookmarks over here. Just launch the web browser and this is the usual Opera Mobile that HTC has been using. Your calendar tab and any calendar, any days that are busy on your calendar show with the little white divot on the corner and you can tap through to actually see your schedule. Go ahead and it gives you the weather. That's something new for the day. Stocks here, you can add and remove those as you see fit. And photos and videos. And we're going to show you this in detail later, but it's very fast as you can see now. And there's some other special surprises. Music player is pretty much the same. If there's album art, it'll show you the album art and you can thumb through the various songs. There's your full weather where you can have multiple cities in here. You can see the animation of the weather right here. Lucky people in Boston, it's mostly sunny. Cloudy day. Surprise, it's raining in Seattle and there goes that windshield wiper. And we have a dedicated Twitter tab here. You can scroll through here and if you tap on anything you can actually click on the link when people put links in. HTC's footprints where you can save photos and other information based on your location using the built-in GPS. And settings, which is pretty similar to what you see on TouchFlow 3D for settings. You can swipe through these very quickly. Now this guy is very fast because it has a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor. That's very unusual for Windows Mobile device. The Toshiba TG01 also has a fast CPU, but this has something else special on top of that compared to the Toshiba. This is a capacitive screen, something that we've never seen on Windows Mobile before, and HTC wrote their own code to support the capacitive display because standard Windows Mobile doesn't. So that means it's like the iPhone and it's like Android devices. It's, it's very responsive to the finger touch. You can do things like pinch and zoom. As you see, you can swipe through the photos with your finger and notice it's really 
iPhone like fast. And if you want to zoom, pan around, it's that fast and that smooth. And bring it back down. So that's what a capacitive display gets you, among other things. Now, Windows Mobile 6.5 has done a few things to make touch more friendly, but there are still areas where you see that naked Windows Mobile with the tiny little uh, check boxes and things like that. And HTC has done a good job of really hiding almost everything at this point and customizing the OS further. Here's the Windows Mobile 6.5 application picker. Obviously, that's very finger friendly. And we'll take a look at, let's see. There's a few places you can see where you're still going to see the standard Windows Mobile interface. But most things are still operable with a finger. This will not work with the stylus unless you find one of those funky organic styluses. And no stylus is built in. As you can see, there's no stylus silo. And really, we haven't found a need for one. Take a look at the on-screen keyboard. Speaking of a place where you might, actually. I think you would need a stylus, but you don't. So here's the on-screen keyboard, bigger and better than ever. This is the landscape view of the keyboard. There is haptic feedback. And it's much easier to type on because it is capacitive. And if you turn to landscape mode, bring up the keyboard. Again, it's pretty huge, but high enough resolution that you can actually see what you're typing up above. Let's take a look at the web browser. Again, this is Opera Mobile, and this phone is Edge only in the U.S. It's an import phone. It doesn't have 3G, so you'd be stuck with Edge on AT&T and T-Mobile. But the fast CPU really helps, and web pages are, are not so torturous to load. It supports the accelerometer, as you can see here. And once the page is fully loaded, this stuff goes away. You can tap on the screen to bring it back up again. And you can scroll just as simply as doing that. In fact, if you start scrolling, the widgets at the bottom go away too. So, finally, we're approaching something that's as good as the iPhone. If you want to pinch and zoom, there you go. So it's very usable over Edge. When we do YouTube, however, we're going to switch over to Wi-Fi because the quality over Edge is not very good. Let's take a look at Google Maps. This comes with Copilot installed, but it's Copilot for Europe, so unless you're taking a trip to Europe, it's not going to get you very far. Google Maps is pre-installed on this, and it works fine with the built-in GPS. GPS module is generally pretty good at getting and latching onto a signal. We just rebooted the phone here, so it's doing a cold start on the GPS. Again, you can pinch and zoom on the maps, and we're loading these maps over edge. And we've already got seven GPS satellites active. Now we're loading satellite view, again over edge. So it's pretty useful if you're out and about, even without the 3G connection. Now hopefully, at least one U.S. carrier will pick up this phone, and then we would have 3G. And you can pinch and zoom on satellite view as well. Now let's take a look at YouTube playback, and we've turned on Wi-Fi for that. And you can scroll through whatever's popular today. And look, there's a demo of Google Chrome, so let's just see how that looks. It's fantastic on the big screen, and the quality is surprisingly high. HTC must have tweaked this. That's probably recorded at fairly high quality, but man, that's a sharp-looking video. 
There is no dedicated camera button. Let's take a look at the camera interface just so you can see. It uses the entire screen as the viewfinder. And if you want to get to settings, just tap that. And then you can get to all your controls and settings. And you can switch between uh, video and camera recording mode. You can touch on the screen anywhere you want to choose your point of focus and then touch the on-screen shutter button to take a picture. Since this is Windows Mobile 6.5, it has Windows Mobile Marketplace to download applications. It's got a full Office suite, and we've downloaded the beta version of Office 2010 Mobile, which just came out recently. Let me take a quick look at that. Uh, again, you can pinch and zoom and scroll inside of here, and the font rendering is pretty accurate for the new version. And you've got all sorts of controls down here, and a full set of menu of controls. Let's take a look at video playback next. I'm going to pick a, a video that we originally made to test on the iPhone 3GS. MPEG-4 H.264 format. at a pretty high, near 2000K BPS resolution. This makes an awesome portable video player. We'll fast forward a little bit. Obviously, HTC has finally taken video playback seriously, and that Snapdragon really helps. So that's the HTC Touch HD2. Again, right now this is available only as an import. It's pretty expensive, around $850. Price might come down, and it runs on edge in this country. And it lasts about a day on a charge. It's fairly power hungry. I can't imagine how it would be on 3G, honestly, because it's it's a fairly demanding device if you use it heavily. But, hey, for this kind of experience, it's worth it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review.